Hello wonderful viewer, this is Anton and welcome to What The Math, this is Kerbal Space Program and today I decided to do something that some of you have requested many many times, specifically I wanted to construct a rocket from scratch and to show you how I usually plan out rockets and how I think about when I make complicated rockets because this is actually a skill that's very very important in this game and just in general because you do need to be able to analyze things and plan out your situations before you start certain missions. Anyway, so today we're going to be constructing Saturn V rocket that is infamous and super super famous for obviously the Apollo missions that delivered the first man to the moon and this is the rocket that Neil Armstrong took to the moon before he landed there. We're going to be doing this from scratch and I'm going to show you how I usually do it, uh, even though this is actually probably one of the more complex rockets you can build. Welcome and enjoy the video. Now I'm going to construct a new rocket from scratch and show you how I usually do it. This is going to be a multi-step process and we actually need to uh, really, really think about what we're going to do. So we're trying to land on the moon. This is our last step, but this is the step we have to start with when we're planning the rocket. So we're going to actually try to plan out our lander first. Before we even start the rocket, let's plan out the lander. And the Apollo lander looks kind of like this. It has something very similar to Mark II lander can. I'm going to raise it and put it right here. And the, this particular lander can has um, an engine on the bottom and also liquid fuel tanks that kind of look similar to this. I usually use the uh, um, this fuel tank called FLT200, and I usually place a few more on the sides. And here, by using X, you can actually give this a little bit of symmetry. Uh, this has a four-way symmetry. Then, by using the D button, I place them right like this. And you can also use uh, th this button right here calls, called the offset to maybe move it a little bit outwards. So this sort of looks um, a little bit more similar to the actual Apollo lander now. It just, it's missing two things. It's missing landing struts, or I guess you can call it gear. So I'm going to place four landing struts right here. This is what they would look like if they were retracted. It's also missing an engine, obviously, and um, I do like to have solar panels on this, so I'm going to place two solar panels here by doing the following. Placing a small fuel tank and a toroidal fuel tank right here, just because this is kind of what the capsule actually looks like, or I guess similar to this, or just to make it look fancy, I guess. Uh, we're also going to place, and we're going to go under utility here and place these solar panels that have 2x3 photovoltaic um, uh, photovoltaic panels, that's what I was looking for. Um, they don't really look good yet, so we're going to offset them and place them right in the middle. There we go. Now, if I were to open these up, if I were to extend them, this is what the capsule is going to look like when it essentially it lands on the surface of the moon. So this looks pretty good. I think this looks pretty realistic. Uh, it's not a perfect capsule, but you know what? This works. It's only, of course, missing an engine. So in terms of engines, one of the more efficient engines you can pick uh, is this right here. Terrier liquid engine is essentially probably the most efficient for lunar landings. The only problem is that we don't have enough delta V. Oh, and by the way, one uh, mod you may want to use for this is Kerbal Engineer because it shows you the delta V that you need for various stages. And uh, to land on the moon, you need at least a thousand, but pro preferably more. And so uh, we actually have that, but it's not showing here because we need to connect these tanks together. So we're going to actually connect them using these external fuel ducts, which are basically like fuel lines that connect things together. And as soon as I do this, look at that, already 2000. I also want to connect these two tanks as well, and this will give us even more. So now we're at 3000 uh, Delta V, which is more than enough to land and then to also take off from, from the moon. And the last part here is this docking port. Now, this is important because this is how we're going to be attaching and reattaching our capsule uh, to our uh, transfer stage, which we will now be building. Now, in the Apollo mission, this was actually on the bottom. And on top of this, this is where the transfer stage was. So we need to now build the transfer stage, but do it backwards. This is actually kind of tricky. And the only reason I know how to do this is because I've done it so many times, but you may want to actually build this separately by creating a new craft if you are not sure how to actually construct these, but I'm gonna show you what I'm doing here. So um, essentially, I am constructing this. There's going to be a command pod 
followed by three fuel tanks that look like this. And lastly, there's going to be an engine on the bottom. Now, this can be really anything, and I think using a uh, terrier is actually more um, more efficient. But just for the sakes of looks and real realism, we're going to go with this engine because this is actually kind of realistic looking. The uh, Apollo capsule kind of actually looked like this. And so this is going to be on top of our other capsule. So here's how I'm going to do this. I'm going to place another docking port on top. This is going to be followed by a part known as um, Rokomax brand adapter. It's going to go this way as well. On top of this, I usually place one of these uh, track separators right here, and you'll find out why this is important uh, when we actually launch the rocket and you'll see what how it works. And now this is where um, we can build the actual transfer stage. So put the engine on top, then on top of this, we're going to place the fuel tanks. And on top of fuel tanks, we place the command pod. But here's the thing, the command pod is actually the last part that's going to be returning to Kerbin. So because of that, what we need to do is we need to make it uh, efficient enough to return safely. So it needs parachutes and it also needs heat shields. So we're going to place another separatron right here. Then we're going to place a heat shield on top of this. So the heat shield is going to go right here. And lastly, the command pod goes on top. Um, this is almost finished, so it only needs parachutes, which we're going to place right now by going to utility. And the parachutes I like to use here are the radial mount parachutes. You really only need three of them, so just place them anywhere you want. Uh, just don't make sure not to block this door because otherwise uh, your astronauts will not be able to get out. So place three right here, and on top of that, we place yet another. Uh, docking ports. So this is essentially almost complete. There's only one more part missing and that's the RCS thruster blocks. This is for realism as well and also because you'll need them to dock with your other parts. So, I, so place four of them here but also place four of them on your other lander as well and you are essentially done with your upper stage which is essentially also known as the Apollo stage. And so this is essentially Apollo craft, but the way it works is actually kind of interesting. So when we reach orbit, this is going to separate, it's going to flip over and connect itself to this um, lander. And then it's going to transfer that lander to the moon. All of this you, you'll see in the next part when we launch this beauty. But you may also have seen me do this in the previous video where I showed you the uh, Apollo 10 mysteries, the mysterious sounds that the um, astronauts heard when they reached the dark side of the moon. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, so now we need to actually build a craft that will take this to orbit and essentially we're going to be constructing the Saturn rocket itself. But this is also the good time for you to rearrange your steps. So we know that parachutes are less, so it's going to go here. We know that this is right before the parachutes, so it's going to go right before them. And we also know that uh, this engine should be one of the last engines to activate. All right, perfect. So let's build the Saturn craft. And what I really like to do is actually use um, a lot of the fairings that will make this even more realistically looking. Uh, to make really cool fairings, this is what I usually do. I place a very large uh, stack separator on the bottom. Uh, you may actually want to remove these struts for a second because they're going to be interfering with your fairings and then go into um, aerodynamics here and choose the biggest fairing possible, which is 3.75 uh, meters. So these fairings will essentially be kind of more uh, for looks, but they also will improve your efficiency when you're um, essentially um, taken off from the lower atmosphere. And so to make this kind of realistic, I usually do this. I kind of place fairings in this way and then they kind of go up and there you go. And so this is what I usually do with the fairings. It kind of looks realistic this way. It's only missing one really, really important part and that's the uh, evacuation system. Oh, by the way, I also forgot to reattach my legs. So I'm gonna do that right now. You can usually do this even if the fairings are already on. And there's another part I forgot to attach, but I'm gonna do this in a second. So let's actually place a very small separatron right here and on top of this we're going to put a super super important part known as LES, launch escape system. So these are absolutely mandatory for realistic missions. So we're going to put it right there uh, and here's what we're missing. Oh yeah, by the way, let's rearrange the steps again. 
And so the only part that we're really missing that's super, super important is actually the struts. So what struts do is they actually prevent things from moving too much. And this craft will move quite a lot. It's going to wobble a lot. So I'm going to place struts almost everywhere. We're going to place them here. We're also going to place them right here and right here as well. They, are, they will actually separate as soon as you get rid of all of these parts, but until then we'll need them. And so you, you want to make sure you, want, you have as many struts as possible so that your rocket stays stable. So that's the upper part, that's the pole part. Okay, so let's build the bottom part now. So this is the actual Saturn V rocket. It has three stages, and unfortunately for us, we don't really have engines that look very similar to um, what they have on, on Saturn V ro rocket, and so we'll need to use something else. To make this as realistically looking as possible, at least from the outside, I'm unfortunately going to have to use um, a very inefficient engine for this mission, but it will definitely make this rocket look more beautiful. And um, what I'm going to be doing is this. I'm going to place... A uh, Kerbodyne uh, tank right here, followed by a Rhino engine. So this is a little bit of an overkill, but it's really the only way for us to make this rocket beautiful. This will be the circularization module that will be basically circularizing our orbit. Then I'm going to place um, a very, very large uh, separ separatron right here. Then comes the second stage. For the second stage, I'm going to use a slightly larger tank, and once again, we're going to use a Rhino engine on the bottom. And lastly comes our first stage, and so once again, we're going to place a very large uh, TR-38D right underneath this engine, followed by uh, a couple of these super large tanks and the Mammoth liquid fuel engine on the bottom. So. Now make sure to actually go through every step and uh, double check that everything is working as it should and is separating in the right order because this is where usually most of the mistakes happen. Um, you can always change this when you're launching the rocket, but it's better to do it now. And uh, one thing we're missing is we're missing the winglets on the bottom. Uh, I think the most realistic winglets are actually these AVT-1 winglets, so place four of them. Um, in the radial symmetry on the bottom of this rocket, and you're ready to go. So this is essentially your Saturn V rocket. This is what it looks like, and this is what we're going to be launching in the next video to try to recreate the Apollo 11 mission. Now, uh, if you want to change your astronauts, you can go into crew right here and uh, place your astronauts in, in the various capsules that you have available here. I'm actually going to be taking Jebediah, Bill, and Val Valentina Kerman, and these are going to be my first uh, lunar or moonar landers in this particular mission. And so essentially, this is how you build rockets in Kerbal Space Program. This is how I usually analyze and uh, plan out all of my rockets, basically by thinking backwards. And so the important parts that you need to remember is that uh, make sure to go through steps so that they're all in correct order. Make sure to add as many struts um, these, these structural elements, strut connectors as you can. And uh, if you are using a really complex rocket, uh, you may also want to make sure to have the winglets on the bottom because they will make your rocket more stable. So in the next video, we're going to launch this and see how it goes. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about how to build rockets in Kerbal Space Program. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Give me later and bye-bye. And don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. And don't forget to watch more videos that will teach you stuff about life. Thank you. Bye-bye.